Hi guys, this is Steve from Taratech. Today I'm here to tell you how I do my Christmas lights using the Falcon 48 Pixel Controller. We've got a lot to cover today, so get yourself a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and get comfortable. Today we're going to look at the standardized components of my Christmas display that I've put together. We're going to take a look at how I do power injection. It's a little different than most. We're going to look at how these components all work together. Then we're going to actually take a look at my yard and see how these components are put together in my yard. Let's start out by taking a look at the list of standardized equipment. At the top of the list, we've got the Falcon 48 control box, followed by differential receiver boxes. I think I have nine of those. Then we have one and six port power supplies. I think I have five or six of those as well. And of course, the pixel lights and the connectors. And for power injection, we have the power injection T's and the power cut three pin adapters. We'll get into those in the power injection part of this discussion. Then there's two and three pin extensions. Then we have the FM transmitter to get your signal out to those cars passing by. We'll take a look at the computer requirements. And then we'll also take a look at what the optional show router might look like. So let's start out with the Falcon 48 control box. This is the brains of the setup. This is the Falcon 48 RGB pixel controller box. It consists of a Falcon 48 circuit board. It's got a 5 volt power supply. I put it in 8 amp only because I like the size of it. It fits this box very well. It's way overkill. 120 volt outlet for it to get its power. Six differential receiver outputs grouped. Channels 1 through 24 and a second set of six differential receiver outputs channel 25 through 48 it has a network in that comes from your computer or your raspberry pi and a network out that would go to a second falcon 48 differential controller box if you had a really big show Let's move on to the second item in our standardized component list, these differential receiver box. This is the differential receiver box. It's equipped with a Falcon differential receiver and a 5 volt 22 amp power supply. This allows you to power the first 50 pixels directly from this box. I've installed four three pin 12 foot connectors that can go directly to pixels. It gets its signal from the Falcon 48 control box through this LAN connector. And it's powered by 120 volt power. It closes up real nice. Stays waterproof. Had it out in the rain without any problems. Let's move on to the third item in their standardized component list, the one and six port power supplies. This is a six port power supply used for power injection. It has a five volt 60 amp power supply and six fused outputs with a two pin connector on each output one for power and one for ground. Powered by 120 volts and it closes up very nice to protect it from the weather. This is the one port power supply used for power injection. The one on the bottom was my original design, the one on the top is my cost reduced design. They both have a 5 volt 8 amp power supply powered by 120 volt cords and they both have fused 2 pin connector outputs and they both close up for waterproofness.
Let's move on to the fourth item on our standardized component list, and the most important, the pixel lights and the three pin connectors. Okay, of course you're going to need pixel lights, three wire pixel lights. And what I've done is I've removed the connectors that come with them. And I've put three pin male and female connectors on the input sides and the output sides of each of the lights. Let's move on to the next item on our standardized list of components, which is the power injection T. We'll get into more detail of how the power injection T works when we get to the power injection section, but this is the hardware that we're going to need for everything to work correctly. For power injection, you need these power injection T's, which I had a Chinese company make a bunch of these for me. And what these are used for is the two pin goes to the one port or six port power supply. And then the three pin sides go to either the input or the output of the lights. Next on our list of standard components is the power cut three pin adapter. This is also used during power injection. This is the power cut three pin adapter. This is used when you need to isolate power between different power sources. For example, the power supply in the differential receiver and the power supply in the power injection power supply, six port and one port. One might say that it's easier just to cut the power lead rather than go through all this trouble to make a connection. But I find, for example, on my six arches, instead of having the first arch have the power just cut at the power line, I can leave all six arches wired exactly the same and then just put this in line and I don't have to worry about which one is the first one in the future in order for it to work properly. Coming in at number seven on our standardized components is the two pin and three pin extensions. This is the two pin extension. This is just an extension for the power and ground lines. This is basically used when you want to mount a power supply, one port or six port power supply, further from the power injection T. You need a little more distance between those. This is the three pin extension. This is used when you want to move the pixels themselves further away, specifically from the differential receiver or from a power injection T or downstream from themselves. Next on our list of standardized components is the FM transmitter. This is my FM transmitter setup. See, it's got a cord to plug in to my computer or my Raspberry Pi. And I also bought an antenna extension. And I also bought this longer antenna, which gives me a bit a little better range out of this thing. And it plugs in to a 120 volt outlet. Works pretty well. Next on our list of standard components is a computer or Raspberry Pi mini computer. All right, so the first thing you'll need is a computer. I use a laptop. Not too great a one. You can see it's an i5 computer with eight gigabyte of RAM. Works fine. And on that computer, you'll have to load up X lights. X lights is a very cool program. What it allows you to do is set up all your lights as models in the program. It allows you to take a song and blow it up into 20 millisecond or 40 millisecond increments. Then you can drag these, pro these 
effects over to the different sections of the song. And then it has a preview window that you can actually simulate your lights to see if you like them. Very powerful program. Works very well. And the greatest part about it, it's free. And pulling up the rear of our standardized component list is the optional show router. I have a dedicated router, an inexpensive one, just for the Christmas show network. So it doesn't have to compete for bandwidth with my regular home router, also keeps the security away. And it works well having the separate network. There's one last thing you're gonna need, and that's network cables. Okay, you're also gonna need some landlines that go from your Falcon 48 controller box to your differential receiver boxes. This is a 150 foot line, which I've used. This is way longer, it depends on your lot size. I thought I was gonna need them this long. I didn't, so I have a lot of spare cable that I have to roll up. But 150 feet, Cat 6 cable works just fine. It doesn't cause any problems at all. This finishes up our discussion on standardized components. A couple extra items to mention. First one, this is not as daunting as it looks. I made, made each of these components by myself. It's really not that hard with some basic mechanical and soldering skills, which I had none when I started. I learned them as I went. If you want me to show you how I make each of these standardized components, let me know in the comments section. If there's enough interest, I'll make a few more videos on how to make each of these components. Let me know which one you're interested in so I can prioritize the important ones first. Number two, there are many ways to do this. This is just a way that I do it. You may come up with your own unique and very different and better way. Number three, I am by no means an expert. I continue to learn every day I work on this. And number four, yes, it does take time. I'm not going to lie to you. But this is a hobby, right? And like any hobby, it takes your time, a pretty big chunk of it. Have patience and enjoy the journey. Okay, with that, let's move on to the next subject. And that next subject is the dreaded subject of power injection. So here we go. Let's start out by taking a look at a basic power injection module. So the power injection module starts out with a power source. In this case, we're using a six port power supply with one line coming out. It's used at 10 amps. So we have 10 amps worth of capacity and it's feeding the power injection T. What the power injection T is allowing it to do, we're allowing the power to go downstream to this set of lights and upstream to this set of lights. So these are 50 pixel light strings and a 50 pixel light string uses basically a maximum of three amps on full white. So we all just always design around full capacity. So what we assume is that the three amps is gonna flow upstream and then, then another three amps is going to flow downstream, taking a total of six amps to run which is well within the capability of the 10 amps on this leg of the power supply. So also part of this is before we can get anything from upstream, including data to make our lights flash, we've got to use our power cut isolator. So the power cut isolator prevents any voltage coming in from upstream with intermingling with this power supply. So it starts out with this power cut power isolator. The data and ground comes through. The data and ground tells these lights what to do. Then these, those lights gets its power from this T and the data and ground continues through to tell these lights what to do. 
So that's our basic module. In our next step, we'll show how you can put these modules together. Okay, let's see how we would chain these together. So you'll see here's our first module with our power injection T and three amps going downstream and three amps going upstream. And then here is our second module. You'll see it's coming off of a second port on the power supply. So from the power supply goes into our power injection T. Three amps going downstream, three amps going upstream. And notice in this case right here, we do not need a power isolator or cut the positives because it's coming from the same power supply. You can share positive voltages and it doesn't do any damage. So let's turn these on one at a time and show you how these work. Okay, let's start with just a set of lights, such as a set coming off a differential receiver and see it's getting power from another source. In this case, you know, it could be a differential receiver. And because we have a power isolator on it, because it has its own power supply, not showing it here, because it has its own power supply, we've got to put on a power isolator. Okay, now let's plug in the first port of this six port power supply. Okay, as you can see now, the first module, power injection module is operational. The first set of lights is getting its power from a different source. So we use the power isolator. So the ground and data is the only thing coming through. So it gets its light control data from another source through the data and ground line. And now these two sets of lights is getting its power through one port on the six port power supply. Now, we've plugged in the second module. Hmm, you say, it's working without power injection. Why do I need power injection? So let's go to white. Okay, on pure white, where it's t taking its full power draw, the one getting its own power supply is all white. The second port where it's plugged in is all white, no problem. Ah, but look at here. As we get into the second module, there's not enough power to get these two sets of lights lit up. This one's looking brown, and this one's looking uh, kind of brownish white. So you can see we have to power inject. So let's hook up this power injection and see what happens. Now we've plugged in our second module of power injection and you'll see everything now is a nice bright white all working the way it's supposed to. And all is working well. Okay, now let's move on to an example with the one port power supplies. They're just a little bit different than this. So we'll take a quick look at how that setup works. Now let's take a look at what this looks like with the one port power supplies. So the difference is the one port power supplies have only five amps of capability to them. So you have to turn down the brightness of the whole system to less than 83%. But right at 83%, the first module will have 2.5 amps going downstream and 2.5 amps going upstream for a total of five amps matching the capability of the power supply. And for the second module, 
We also get 2.5 amps downstream and upstream with the five amps total coming from the other version of the one port power supply, maxing out its five amp capability. One thing to point out is I've got this set where if you set the brightness of the whole system by the first one and it sets the brightness of all the lights going downstream. So let's go ahead and plug these in. Oh, let's. And notice what's different here is that because they're two different power supplies, we have to use our power cut power isolator here to prevent power from this power supply from being shared with this power supply over here. So let's plug these in one at a time and see how they operate. We're going to start the same way we looked at the system before. Now you'll see we start here with our first set of lights. In this case the brightness is turned down a lot less than 83%, but um, that's the maximum it could be is 83%. So now you'll see that the first module is not plugged in. So let's plug in the first power injection module and see what happens. Now we have our first power injection module plugged in. And the first set of lights is getting its power from its own supply with a power isolator, power cut adapter. And now these first two lights is getting its power from this single port power supply. And let's see if we switch to white. It's a little lower, lower the brightness because right now the power supply is limited to five amps capability. So in order to keep it down to two and a half amps upstream and two and a half amps downstream, we've got to keep our brightness to less than 83%. I've got this set to much less than 83% because it's just for demonstration only. So as we move on, you'll see that residual voltage in white that would come downstream here and turn these yellow because there's not enough voltage does not happen because we've got another power isolator between these two sets of power supply, power injection modules because the second power injection module is going to get its power from this power supply and that's a different power source than the first one. So let's plug it in and show you what happens there. As you can see, we've got the second power injection module plugged in now and all of the lights are following the same pattern because data and ground find its way all the way through. And if we run this totally on white, you'll see there's absolutely no degradation in color. So the only difference with two separate power supplies is you've got to have the power isolator, power cut adapter between them. All right, in closing on power injection, I want to make a couple of points. First of all, take your time. Make sure you understand where all the wires are going. But first, I recommend getting one of these cheap single channel controllers. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. That allows you to test these things without doing the complete controller differential receiver setup. So I keep one of these around every time I make a set of lights. Every time I put a circuit together, I test it with this first before I hook up my controller and differential receiver. So that really helps. Another thing is all the connectors, make sure you plug in all of the connectors before you plug in any of these things into the wall. Because what happens is as you're making the connection, you'll by default twist a little bit and it'll make some kind of weird surge and it will blow one, two, three, or all of the lights in a group. A lot of times it's just the first one and trying to troubleshoot that 
And then going back and trying to replace just that one pixel is a royal pain in the neck. So make sure you make all connections before you plug any of these lights, either the power supplies, the differential receivers, whatever. Make sure all these connections are hooked up before you plug them into the wall. One other thing to point out is this was actually my first year setup. I did not have a, a Falcon 48 controller or differential receivers. I had this $10 controller and I had these lights across the eave of my house. And that was my first introduction to RGB pixels. The controller is kind of cool as you step through it. It has a bunch of different modes and I would change them every night to do something different. So it's kind of cool, even though it didn't dance to music, it still had these various patterns that I was able to change practically every night, just play with it. Another thing to point out is that this also setup works well with the single power supply. You know, imagine that this is five arches and each arch is in, in line here, or imagine that this is five dancing poles. All this works in many different ways. All right, so this concludes our power injection system. I hope this makes sense to people. This is the way I do it. I find this very simple to understand and it seems to work every single time. Okay, let's wrap up our power injection discussion with a couple of good points. First one is number one, for five volt pixels, make sure that any pixel is no more than 50 pixels from a power source. That will ensure that you won't have any dulling of your colors um, between pixels or groups of pixels. Number two, common power supplies do not require the power cut isolation between the power injection modules. So you don't need that there. But number three, different power supplies do require power cut isolation between power injection modules. So remember that. And number four, Make sure you make all 5 volt connections before plugging into any 120 volt outlet to keep you from blowing any pixels and having to troubleshoot and fix things. Alright, so that wraps up our power injection. So if you go back to our main agenda, we've covered standardized components. We've now finished covering power injection. So let's move on to how these components work together as a whole. So that's where we're going to go now. Here we go. Here we are with everything all hooked up in the same place where we can see it without being scattered all over the yard. So let's walk through these one at a time to see how we hook all this up. We'll start over here with our computer, in this case a laptop running X lights. We could also run a Raspberry Pi. I don't have it hooked up for this demonstration because we're going to run directly off the laptop for our demonstration. So coming off the audio port, the headphone jack of our computer, we've got our FM transmitter and it's set to 91.3 cuz that's the open channel in my area with the extended antenna for good range. Okay, then from the computer we go into the router. Really all the router does is allow the controller box to get an IP address so the computer can talk to the controller. This also sets the stage if you ever want to use the EPS pixel sticks. I uh, use the Wi-Fi to do that, which I'm gonna try someday. Okay, and then if we move on, we got the Falcon 48 controller box hooked up to the green landline there to our router. Then off of one differential receiver leg, 
Remember, we can have 12 of these, and we're only going to use one. So you could put a lot of lights out there with this setup. So off the controller box, one leg of differential receiver. I have my longest set of cables here to show you that it works. This is actually 200 feet of 5E cable um, that I use when I'm troubleshooting um, or setting up in the backyard so I have to move my controller box from its location. So, so I put that on there to show that it works. 5E, 250 feet, and it plugs into the LAN port of the differential receiver. And here's the differential receiver. And one of the ports of the differential receiver go directly to a set of lights. The second port on the differential receiver this is where you might use a three pin extension to get a little more distance from the receiver box. So I put a three pin extension in here to show you how it works. And that goes out to that set of lights. Um, yeah, so then we go to the third differential receiver output and it goes to this set of lights. We've got one set of power from the differential receiver we have our standard power injection setup with our six port power supply and one of the ports on that power supply goes to this power injection module and powers these two lights and then the second port on our six port power supply powers this power injection module and notice I put a two pin extension on here because this is where you might want to use a two pin extension if you need to get a little more distance to your T's, power injection T's so the power injection T there and power injection T there and you notice because it's from the single six port power supply, the single power supply source. We do not need a power isolator here. So let's move back to the fourth leg of the fourth channel of this differential receiver. This differential receiver goes down this channel, first set of lights, gets its power from the differential receiver. Here's a one port power supply powering power injection for these two lights. And notice we have a power cut isolator here because we have a different one port power supply. And that power supply is powering these two lights. Okay, and also another thing you notice, we have a lot of 120 volt extension cords you're gonna need. But notice, it's only one circuit. These RGBs actually don't use that much power. Okay, so let's check our connections, plug this in, and show you how it works. Okay, I have X lights set on just a static animation. And these colors are actually meaningful. You can see all of the pixels in red on channel 4, channel 3, 2, and 1. They are all getting their power from the differential receiver box. So from that 22 amp power supply. Okay, so now let's move over to the 6 port power supply. Okay, off one port of the six port power supply, these yellow lights are getting their power. So that's where they get powered up. And then from the second port on the six port power supply, that's where these green lights are getting their power from. And as said before a few times, power cut isolation is only required back to the differential receiver because that's a different power supply 
and a power cut isolator is not required between these two power injection modules because they're coming from the same power supply. Okay, so now let's look at this fourth channel. This fourth channel, the red lights are getting its power from the differential receiver. It's a power cut adapter because we're going to a different power supply. To the blue lights, which is getting its power from this one port power supply. Now, because we're going to change power supplies, we have to use a power cut adapter. And then these purple lights are getting its power from this one port power supply. All right, so let's kind of review what we might use these for. So the first channel, which is a single 50 lights, that might be for a single display unit you might have in your yard, which is something by itself. Uh, and with an extension, if you go to get a hefty a little further from the differential receiver box, you can get, use an extension. You've got to be careful if you get these extensions too long, the signal won't make it to the lights. So I don't have more than about 20, 25 feet going to those on a 16 gauge wire. Okay, this six port power supply leg, this could be used as for a set of arches, could be used for a set of dancing poles, which is what I use them both for. It could also be used for a matrix. It could be used for a mega tree. Anywhere that you have a lot of lights close by each other, that they're not very far apart. If they do get a little further apart, you can use the two pin extension, but mostly the six port power supply in this setup is set for if you have a lot of lights in the same location. When your lights spread out, for me, such as on the eve of my house, that's when you would use this setup with the single port power supplies. You use this setup when you're having to go a long distance between your lights, like I said, along the eve of your house, maybe along the edges of your roof line, maybe along a long fence line, but when you need to spread these out a long way and you wouldn't be able to reach with the single port power supply. Okay, so this static display is pretty boring. So let's move on to some action with some non-copyrighted music so we don't get in trouble from YouTube and show you this thing working. Okay, notice I have my garage stereo set to FM and tuning to 91.3 so that it can catch the FM coming off of this transmitter. So when we start it, We'll hear the music. I'm going to shut the garage door to make it a little darker in here so you can see the little bit of sequencing I did with this non-copyrighted YouTube song. Okay, so that's enough to show you that this actually does work. So that kind of puts the finishing touches on our putting it all together section. Some of the key things to point out in this section is one, make sure you get all of your connectors from the same supplier. Each supplier does their connectors slightly differently and they gotta be 110% compatible in order for this to work properly. Number two, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to use X-Lights and how to set up the Raspberry Pi and the Falcon Pi player. You can learn all that on YouTube fairly easily. Number three, don't be afraid of power injection. It's really not that complicated. It allows for a lot of customization to your show. And lastly, a 5-volt system, yes, it needs more power injection, but it uses a ton less power than a 12-volt system. Okay, let's go back to our main agenda. So I think we've covered standardized components, we've covered power injection, and now we've finished covering how the components work together. Now, let's take a little tour of my house and my yard and show you how I have this all set up. So you can run your show from your computer, or you can get the optional 
Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has an internet wire, landline that goes to the router. The show router, not my home router. This is a separate show router. This router is not connected to the internet. It's not required to run your show. But if I do want this router to have internet, so I can update X Lights versions or update other things, or just use the internet while I'm using it. I have this white internet cable that goes to my home router. And I just plug it in the WAN port here. And that will automatically give me internet access to my show router. And then from the Raspberry Pi, there's an audio outlet. Audio out finds its way to the FM transmitter. Use a sign stick FM transmitter. Works okay. And then I bought this optional antenna lead so I can run the antenna outside so I keep all these electronics in the safe location in my office and then you'll see there's another landline here the gray one that finds its way outside the window to the Falcon 48 and the window it just goes out the window and I just have a piece of insulation in there to keep the cold from coming in. Hi, we're in the backyard here now. And you see there's the antenna extension wire lead, leads to the FM transmitter antenna, which is mounted right here on the eave of the house. And then the landline, which comes from the router finds its way to the Falcon 48 assembly. From there, you can see all the landlines connected from all the different receivers. I bought way too long of landlines, about 150 and 100 foot landlines. It was way too long, but it's okay. All I had to do was coil them up here. It didn't make any difference. And then to get these out to different receivers, the ones that are on the other side of the house, find their way up the wall and down the eave of the house. And then the ones that are in the front yard on the ground find their way up and over. All right, so here we are over the fence. You can see here's where all the LAN wires go to all the differential receivers. You'll see this goes down the side of the house. The ones up on top find their way to the other side of the house. And then this one goes out to the front of the house. Here's where I have my pairs of differential receivers and power supplies. You'll see for the arches and the poles. I have my differential receiver hidden under the bush here. And then the power supply is more central to the props over here. And you'll see they are power injected with the T's. Every other arch and every other pole. All right, then if we swing over here to the window and shutters, you'll see there's pair of differential receivers and power supplies for that set of lights and models and you'll see there's another set right here 
differential receiver and power supply, which is used for these six spiral trees. And then you'll see here's another set of differential receiver and power supply used for this window and those shutters. And here, I have another set of differential receivers and power supplies for the third window. Then you see if you come over here, differential receiver up there. And this side of the walkway lights gets its power from this power supply. And you can see they use the standard power injection T. So it powers 50 lights this way and 50 lights this way. And then we put another T in. Going 50 lights to here. And then this power supply. All right, then you'll see this column actually gets its power from a single power supply. And then this left-hand side gets its power from this set of differential receivers and power supplies. It gets its power for these lights. From this differential receiver and power supply. And that also feeds these two poles and these two arches. And you can see each one of those has a power injection T to inject power for each of those. And the power injection T for the shutters, not the shutters, the arches are right here. And then you can see up on the roof, you can see up there in the corner, there's a set of differential receivers and power supplies for that top eave and the star. All right, now let's move on to the eave. How do the eave? The eave actually uses three channels from that differential receiver. But in this case now, there are the one channel power supplies. Every hundred bytes. See, there's one there. In this case, actually the first 50 lights are powered by the differential receiver. And then there's a power supply. There, there's another power supply here.
down this way. See the power supply up here. Another power supply here. And another power supply here. Now you'll see for 120 and 20 volts, all these systems need power. This you guys have a couple outlets here, and another one in the backyard. And basically, I just ran custom made. I think it was 14.3 wire I bought for that. And basically, it's my power. I have some extension cords. That find their way out to the front here. To power the front power supply. And the front differential receiver. So this is a pretty thorough walkthrough of how I have this set up on my house. So this kind of concludes the how I put this together on my yard agenda item. So let's go back to the agenda and make some closing comments. In reviewing our standard agenda, we finished standardized components, we finished power injection, we finished how all of these components work together, and we finished a tour of the components in my yard. So guess what? We're done. I apologize for this video being so long. I was going to break it up into four shorter parts, but each agenda item built on each other, so I thought it was important to keep them all together. So in closing, my goal for this video was to give you enough of a thorough overview to give you the confidence to finally start your own Christmas light display. I really wish there was a video like this prior to me starting my journey. I hope you can see that it's really not that complicated or hard. You can do this. If this video inspired you in any way, please let me know in the comments section. For those of you who already have displays, I hope you found something in this video useful. And let me know in the comments as well. If any of you would like to see more detail on how I put together any of these standardized components or any of the props in my yard, also please leave a note in the comments section. If there's enough interest, I'll make a video for you guys. Please let me know which component you are interested in so I can prioritize as required. Also in the description below there's a link to my 2019 video playlist where you can see my setup in action. So in closing this is a fun hobby and once you get started it's easy to get addicted. Yes it takes some time but when the cars are lined up in front of your house watching your show it makes it all worthwhile. So take your time and enjoy the journey. Please leave a comment, hit the like button, and please subscribe so you'll be the first to know when I publish a new video. So thanks for watching. From our family to yours, have a safe and Merry Christmas.